stage breast cancer patients have a wide range of treatments, including mastectomy and breast conservation, depending on their wishes, with adjuvant chemo, hormonal, and targeted therapies. But as with many patients here, people present in advanced stages where treatment is generally mastectomy, chemo, radiation, and hormones. And radiation techniques, which we'll have one of our colleagues talk about after me, include standard whole breast radiation, partial breast radiations, accelerated whole breast, and hypofractionated regimens. And today, breast cancer subtypes really drive treatments, whether it's early stage, good prognosis, luminal A's, all the way to basal-like or two positive therapies. So as we know, locally advanced falls into basically three categories. You have the non-inflammatory operable disease, you have non-inflammatory inoperable disease, and then inflammatory breast cancer. So locally advanced breast cancer, we generally will see these large tumors, five centimeters clinical T3 or four, those that have skin or chest wall involvement, multiple lymph node involvement with fixed or matted nodes in the axilla and involvement in the next echelon, the cervical internal mammary nodes. And then you have inflammatory breast cancer. And these pictures that I'm showing you are actually in America, okay? So we see these too. And a lot of this is from fear and disbelief, denial. So in the U.S., really locally advanced breast cancer is about 15% or 28,000 per year. Tumors of greater than five centimeters represent about 6% of new cases in the U.S. since 2000. But as we see here in third world countries, it's a majority of breast cancers that diagnosis and associated with significant risk for systemic disease. Presentation can be pain, masses, nipple soreness, bleeding, axillary masses, skin ulceration, edema, and increased breast size. The natural history is these patients will develop hematogenous mets, as the gentleman earlier presented that the patient who went to the four different traditional healers because she would have already had metastatic disease. The lo local spread, as we said, are to the skin, deep lymphatics, that can lead to ulceration. And the hematogenous spread primarily to bone, lung, pleura, liver, and brain. And in locally advanced breast cancer, the greatest risk of recurrence is in the chest wall. And this is just showing you that two-thirds of recurrences with stage three or localized stage four breast cancers are at a single site and a third are at multiple sites with distant metastasis in 52%, but up to 70 within two years. So what are our goals of treatment in these patients? Well, really, to try and control the local regional disease, eradicate the occult mets if we can, and treatment should be multimodality and tailored to their risk. So these are the treatment modalities, as we said, and unfortunately, in a lot of African company, countries, we don't have radiotherapy, as you can see, and why it's very important if we can get these into these countries, this is an option because of the fear a lot of these women coming with advanced stages don't want mastectomy. They refuse mastectomy if that's their only option. And if there were radiation in these countries, this would be an option for them. So as a, this diagram shows, trimodality therapy plus or minus targeted therapy remains the standard of care. Post-mastectomy radiation has significant local control and overall survival benefit. And most post-mastectomy data, especially from Europe, includes internal mammary. And I'll talk a little about, bit about the EORTC internal mammary trial with mastectomy or breast conservation. But if you follow this um, line here, as you see, if you give neoadjuvant, then mastectomy post-mastectomy radiation, local regional control can be as high as 85 to 95% with overall five-year survival of 50%. So really good responses. And prognosis is really the prognostic factors include age, your stage and histologic grade, your clinical response, which is very important, lymph node status, hormone status, and HER2 status. 
So if we look at operable locally advanced breast cancer, which is usually the T3 in zero to one patients, the patterns and risk of local recurrence after mastectomy are very dependent on the size of the tumor and degree of lymph node involvement. But other risk factors that can affect this include the presence or absence of skin or chest wall involvement, the type of surgery that was performed, margin status, lymphovascular invasion, um, oncotype DX score, 21 gene profile that is used to look at whether in the United States people need chemo, and also in some cases for prognosis, biologic subtype and response to their chemotherapy which can be another issue I know in Africa, like uh, Burkina Faso, that they just decided not to give patients chemotherapy anymore. And basically if you get, and they have no radiotherapy, so basically you get diagnosed with cancer, some morphine if you're lucky, and that's it. So this is a big issue. So what are indications for post-mastectomy radiation? Well, we know if a patient has positive margins, gross residual disease, definitely T4 tumors, T2s with positive lymph nodes, gross extracapsular disease in the axilla, patients with large amounts of lymph nodes and close surgical margins. We use it to reduce the rate of local regional recurrence. And in the United States, especially younger age women. So this is showing some data from MD Anderson that even in patients who get chemotherapy after mastectomy, giving radiation is beneficial in decreasing local regional failure, if you, especially as your lymph nodes increases. So we see in these trials improved disease-free survival and overall survival with radiation. Now, radiation technique, which, I, as I said, my colleague will talk about after me, has contributed to an increased incidence of non-cancer, breast cancer mortality, and can be modified to decrease this risk. So the three main trials, or four, I should say, post-mastectomy trials that we talk about are the Danish trials, the British Columbian, and the MD Anderson trials. In the British Columbia trial, which is an older trial, which was looking at patients who were treated with mastectomy followed by CMF chemotherapy, which in the U.S. is generally not used now. We use more anthracycline and taxane-based chemotherapies. But the randomization was to radiation or radiation with a median follow-up of 150 months. And what we saw was a significantly decreased local regional failure rate with radiation and it resulted in a higher rate of disease-free survival. In the MD Anderson Cancer Center studies, over 1,000 patients were treated with ADRIA-based chemotherapy without radiation. And the five prospective clinical trials over 20 years span with 10 years of medium follow-up. What we saw was only patients with greater than four lymph nodes had local regional recurrences of greater than 20%. And this is what these two tables and graphs show. So if you gave post-mastectomy radiation after neoadjuvant chemo, and this is looking again MD Anderson data at 576 patients who were treated with the chemo, surgery, and radiation versus just chemo and surgery alone, what we found was that the 10-year local regional results showed only recurrence was only 8% in those that received radiation versus 22% in those that did not get radiation. And for stage three tumors that achieved a pathologic complete response after chemo, the local regional recurrence was even lower with the addition of radiation. Now what was interesting is the Danish group has looked at molecular profiling for predicting the benefits of post-mastectomy radiation in breast cancer patients. So basically, they tried to identify the patients who really were at high risk for breast cancer recurrence after mastectomy, who were treated with systemic treatment using a gene expression profile. So their model actually yielded the seven predictive genes that they call the DBCG-RT profile. 
And what they found were those that were classified as low recurrence risk had no additional benefit from post-mastectomy radiation <coughs> compared to those um, who had high risk. So this is a validated profile that may be a way to help us individualize treatments more. Because we have many patients who after they get chemo, surgery, they're like, do I really need to have radiation? I thought you told me my tumor was gone. Do I really need to have it? And this will allow us again to select out, to do the personalized medicine. So combined modality with breast preservation therapy. Although most locally advanced breast cancer patients will require a mastectomy, breast preservation is feasible in certain locally advanced patients who have a good response to neoadjuvant chemo. So usually clinical N2, N3s with small primary tumors. And even many patients with large clinical T3s have a good response to, who have a good response to neoadjuvant chemo. And this is just showing here, prognosis is based on pathologic response of the primary and lymph node status. And again, this is showing local recurrence after neoadjuvant chemo and breast conservation surgery, the local failure rate at between eight to 11 years are between seven to 21%. So these are the four factors that are associated with breast cancer recurrence and local recurrence after neoadjuvant chemo. The clinical N23 lymphovascular space involvement, multifocal pattern of residual disease and residual disease greater than two CMs. Now, we're, there's always an argument about treating the internal mammary nodes, and in most randomized clinical trials of post-mastectomy radiation, internal mammary nodes were treated. Even the MA20, look, which compared surgery to axillary lymph node radiation, um, included internal mammary nodes, and the present NSABP B51 RTOG 1304, which is looking at neoadjuvant chemo, surgery, whether it's breast conservation or mastectomy, and lymph node, sentinel lymph node biopsy, if there is a response after this, comparing giving regional node radiation or not. And um, because of the concerns over cardiac toxicity, even in the modern chemo era and radiation era, we are looking at seeing who we can not give radiation to. But Old internal mammary radiation data suggested that the survival benefit of treating it was offset by cardiac toxicity, but with recent radiation modern techniques, we don't really see this increased toxicity. So what we're looking at here is that we know if there's a high rate of internal mammary positivity with positive, positive axillary nodes and medial lesions. So what we're seeing here in this study that I talked about that came out in 2013, actually looking at a trial of internal mammary radiation after mastectomy, there's no difference in survival. Now, I'm going to kind of skip this because we're short on time, although so, some countries, like Ghana, there is breast reconstruction being done for some breast cancer patients that are requiring mastectomies. This is just showing that there can be some studies looking at breast reconstruction and the timing and fractionation of radiation giving in these high-risk patients. Now, what is most important, I think, in Africa now, if we can get more radiation machines, is the use of neoadjuvant radiation, this with chemo. This fell out of practice because of the high toxicity rates that were seen years ago. But this is something that is the standard for many malignancies. And if we can figure out what the timing of the chemo could be with radiation, especially in women who require mastectomy or may not be able to get it or are afraid to get it, this could be a beneficial treatment. Now, there's limited data today in breast cancer, but we do use 5-FU in the form of oral zolota as a radiosensitizing agent in selected patients with the benefit of some patients actually having a pathologic complete response 
with overall survival improvement without added toxicity. So there's a recent prospective phase two trial of 32 patients with locally advanced breast cancer, and we're looking at a period of 2009 to 2011. These patients received FEC chemo followed by weekly doxytaxel with 45 gray of radiation and a boost. This, this combined radiation and chemo produced a significant increase in pathologic complete response, although no significant decrease in disease-free survival or overall survival. And there was higher toxicity with grade three pneumonitis and dermatitis with one death. But Sylvia Formenti, who's at Cornell now, I believe, she has been able to show less toxicity with giving twice weekly paxlitaxel in, with radiation with improved pathologic complete response. So I think this is something we have to try and research more and consider, especially for these patients who may require mastectomy. Now, as we know, I'm just gonna go through this quick, management of inflammatory breast cancer. We know it's a very aggressive disease, one to 5% of all breast cancers. And there, it's important to talk about molecular genetics of this, and this is something we aim for. We know that most of these are hormone receptor negative, highly proliferative, 60% or more are HER2 positive, and inflammatory tumor cell lines and tumor specimens have a lot of VEGF, uh, BFGF, and interleukin-6 and IL-8. There is a contributory role of P53 tumor suppressor um, genes and high levels of PDL1. So, and also the RAS family is seen in, in um, inflammatory breast cancer, which really separates it from the rest of locally advanced breast cancer. The workup just diagrammed here, looking at the medical history, the clinical exam, physical exam, systemic workup, as we would for any locally advanced breast cancer. But historically, we know surgery alone has a less than 5% overall survival. Surgery and radiation, a little better. And radiation alone, similar results at MD Anderson, it's about 10%, but there's a 50% local control rate. So again, trimodality treatment with improvement in disease-free survival and overall survival, but response to chemo, complete pathologic response is a prognostic indicator. And you can see this again in this slide. But one thing I want to show, MD Anderson data showed that you can use dose escalation, taking it from 60 gray to 66 gray in patients who may not have had a complete pathologic response. So who benefits from this? Those with less than a complete response to chemo, younger age patients, and those with closer positive margins. So the management, again, is trimodality, response to chemo best, no role for breast conservation, and the role for dose escalation in high risk patients may improve local regional control. Now I hope my colleague will be speaking a little bit about this, that post mastectomy hypofractionation trials, where we're looking at treatment in a shorter period of time. And there have been two studies that have come out from Rutgers and from China that was presented last year in Astro showing using um, comparing hypofractionated 2.9 gray in 15 fractions to the 2 gray in 25 with improvement and no differences in radiation pneumonitis, late skin toxicity, or lymphedema. And this is, can even be shown, can it be used for regional lymph node radiation after breast conservation or mastectomy? But, you know, we have concerns about adequate um, dose control and side effects from this. So this is just the data looking at this from the post-British Columbia trial that tried to compare this. But overall, I want to say the summary of recommendations for locally advanced breast cancer are these patients are at high risk for both local regional control and disease um, distant metastasis, proper staging, imaging, and looking at genetics if you can, and tumor markers are important, 
and only a few randomized controls trials specifically examine the role of radiation in locally advanced breast cancer, but it is recommended after mastectomy in most patients. Preferred techniques and clinical target volumes and the optimum doses to these regions have not been prospectively studied in locally advanced, but trimodality treatment has, seems to have the best outcome and breast conservation can be achieved in select populations of patients who have non-inflammatory locally advanced breast cancer and a good response to chemo. So thank you very much. <laughs>